So don't get complacent when you're on a wide undulating track, four wheel drive or otherwise. Just be aware and look out for signage. It might be a very small track coming off the side of that, but that's the one you've got to take. Something else to be aware of. You've got the track there. And it looks very inviting to go up that way. You've got steps, but that's not actually the track. So in this instance, you're gonna keep going straight ahead, which is what you wanna do all the time, unless there's any indication any other way. There's no indication that I should go up there, so I'm gonna go straight ahead. And I've picked up the marker again here. As I say, if I hadn't have gone straight ahead, and went up the steps, which looks a likely way to go, I could have cost myself a lot of time. I'm not saying I'd get lost, but by the time I'd realised what was going on, I could cost myself half an hour or a couple of kilometres easily. So be aware of that. Concentrate on what's going on underneath your feet. Like here. It's a really rocky section quite easy to trip up and fall flat on your face and these sections and other sections similar you want to really concentrate at the end of the day in areas like this and others you should be mentally tired at the end of the day. Just checking underneath your feet. You know, snakes, rocks, sticks that can trip you up, anything like that. Just concentrate on what's going on underneath your feet. I've got a four wheel drive track here. The post is there. Now, okay. I can go down that way or I could go up that way. Now luckily there's another post lying in the hedge over there. But as you can see being on a four-wheel drive track it's, it's not very stable and that's no one's fault and people do the right thing by putting them in there. It's the bloody idiots that come by on four wheel drives and take them out. It's the main track going down here. You've got to be wary of these side tracks. It's very tempting, obviously, to go through here. Down onto the beach have a swim which is fantastic that's exactly what you want to do but when you get down onto the beach in some sections you're walking farther down put some type of marker on the beach you leave your trekking pole there and don't go too far away from that go almost directly down to the beach if you can and then you won't you'll uh, be able to retrace your steps easily back up there onto the track so yeah be beware of that it can be uh it can be pretty tricky and you can end up missing the track the track may not keep going down beside the beach it may disappear inland and if you don't come back on the same part you're going to lose the track and cost yourself maybe a k or two and some time Going down off the track now, onto the beach. And this one's rather obvious, as most entrances onto the beach are. It's very, you know, you're not very often gonna go wrong. The ones you have to watch out for are the exits. On this particular occasion, the sign's well in there. 
and we've got wooden steps coming up off the beach so in this instance it's very very hard to get lost but as I say watch out for those side tracks off the beach where you're not going to go the full length of the beach you're going to make a turning up off the beach now we've got a really wide beach now so it's very tempting of course to take your shoes off and go down there in the water as you walk but because of the width of the beach the exit from the beach is going to be higher up and that's what you've got to be aware of that you don't miss that exit because some of the exits are really tricky some of the signage has been blown down in the wind in the winter and it can be lying down so you've got to be really aware of the exits on the beach look out for the different signages on the trails you get used to it quite quickly you might be following a certain symbol a certain color with a design on it so you're following that or there could be blazes on trees or rocks painted blazes of a certain color be aware if you're going across rocks there could be metal plates screwed onto the rocks as well as following posts and you could also be following rock cans and when you come to a certain section there may be a some rocks or some logs put in the way which you can still step over but they are, can be an indication of that's where you make a turn so just keep your wits about you with all those things and be aware that it's often not just one type of symbol on the trail it can be many so just be aware of that toilet breaks on the trail You don't want to be leaving your pack on the trail while you go 200 feet or so off the trail. You may run into a water source there and decide to go left or right from that water source as well. And it's you can get disorientated and lose the trail. Now if you've left your pack with your water and maybe even your mobile phone you could panic pretty quickly maybe perfectly flat and there's not a problem but if there's lots of high shrubs or trees you can easily get disorientated normally you're not going to get completely lost but you could pick your way back and pick up the trail farther on maybe round a bend you know you're on the trail but then you're not quite sure where you left your pack are you got to go can you go forward or back you're not quite sure and then if you do get disorientated and you do go off in the wrong direction at least you've got all the stuff with you to help you get back on track quickly I've seen it, I've seen it done, I've done it myself once. I've even seen people stick their trekking pole on the track and they've got like a 200 foot piece of string that they attach to their trekking pole and go out with that into the bush for their toilet break. I guess that's another idea you could use. I have, that seems extreme to me, I haven't used that. Never leave your pack anywhere. You just never know nowadays. You've got everything in there, especially if you're on a multi-day. Be aware of that. Of course, with the toilet breaks, I can see what you're thinking. Yeah, you old bastard, you've probably got Alzheimer's. No wonder you get confused and can't find your way back. But believe me, as much as you'd like to think that, that's not the case. 
this happened a few years ago to me. Nothing I tell you hasn't happened to me. I can remember instances up the north of Australia here where people have got badly lost for hours and hours. And they're only half a kilometre from where they were meant to be. When it's obviously when it's trees you can't see, but even when it's low lines scrub. Everything looks the same after a while, and you can get disorientated really quickly, believe me. And it has nothing to do with having Alzheimer's or being old. That's my story anyway, and I'm sticking to it. I can Seeker, I hope you found some of those points interesting. I'm going to sign out now. Goodbye. Take care. And I hope to see you on the next video soon. And if you have a mind to, it'd be great if you could subscribe to my channel. Okay, thanks. Goodbye.